Okay, cool. So um, this is the training briefing for the Rebuild Food Share, um, which is starting on Thursday the 13th of August, and will be happening every Thursday after that, one till three every Thursday. Um, so I'm just going to take you through a PowerPoint and a high-end done video, which me, Debbie and Leanne did. Tell you what, move over Spielberg. <laughs> not <laughs> so um yeah it's not great but it, it does what it needs to do so i'm just sharing the powerpoint um and i know um pam have you got the powerpoint to hand no no and that's matter. that's okay don't worry um so the the start of the powerpoint is a poster of the food share and it just says that we are happy to announce that fair share is back uh, free food at CF61 every Thursday, 1 till 3 p.m. at CF61. Um, it's a really nice poster. So if you're able to, um, you can cut and paste this into an email um, and send it to any friends, relatives, people, local, that you think might be able to distribute this to let as many people know as possible. So that's our first volunteering opportunity is to promote it. So. If you can do that at any point, that would be really helpful. So why are we doing this? Um, I suppose we've been, uh, the Rebuild team have been trying to, to help people with their mental well-being throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and it's been an interesting journey. We've had to adapt and uh, be flexible and learn lots of new skills to be able to um, meet meet people's needs and the well-being cafe every wednesday has come out of that and the time for you session every friday has come out of that as well and we also have a telephone befriending scheme which is is slow in starting but is meeting a need for a few people um there's also throughout this uh, pandemic there's there will, will be inevitably financial insecurity for a lot of people in our community and that will mean you know there's going to be some problems with for people maybe getting food on the table for their families um, or they're just finding they you know it's this they've got children and they want to use money elsewhere and if we can provide them with a little bit of you know a boost to, so they can spend their money elsewhere that would be fantastic as well um, and also you know just looking after our planet still just um, using end of day food waste as well just trying to be responsible so it doesn't go into landfill so that's the aim of it, that we're hoping just to serve our community and help people um, with, with their mental well-being and some financial insecurity. It's going to be a drop in the ocean, but it's always worth dropping stuff in the ocean than not dropping stuff in the ocean. So I want to reassure you that safety and well-being is paramount. It's the first thing. Your safety is really important to us and your well-being is a priority to us. Um, and it's your choice whether you come along. Um, if you find you, you volunteered to come along for a session and you come along and there's just something that's not feeling right for you, maybe you're feeling a bit more anxious that day, um, maybe there's just something about the environment, please, please, please don't stay if it's causing you distress like that because your well-being is definitely our priority and we will make it work without you. We'd prefer you to be safe and to feel happy um, rather than do something that is, which is going to make things worse. Is that clear? Do you understand? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So, and we want people in the community to feel that safety. And it's like with horses, they can smell fear. <laughs> I never <laughs> pet a horse they don't like me. I'm scared of them. But I think people can, will gen, if we're generating anxiety, um, that, that can be passed on. So we don't, I don't want you to feel anxious about volunteering here. Um, I want you to feel happy and safe and, it, and find it enjoyable that you're once again able to hang out with other real people in real flesh yeah. and, um, so and, good. Do, and make a difference. Yeah, I'm looking so, forward uh, to that, seeing actual yeah, people. Yeah, me too. Yeah, so we're, we're really excited about it. So what's the setup going to be? How are we going to do it? Now, this is where you get to see our excellent, excellent uh, filming. Mm -hmm. Pam, I'm going to send this to you. Yeah. Um, 
but um, she says if she can find it. Um, here it is. Um, I'll send all this to you after and then it will all make a bit more sense. But essentially, we're going to talk it through how the room is set up. Hi. So um, I'm just going to share the screen now. Now in a minute. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> so, okay, it's just three, it's nearly four minutes long. So here we go. So people can, you hear it? can wait. Yeah. Um, people, I think, relatively know two metres are. So if there's more people, that can extend further. And they have lovely Aunt Leanne demoing a person <laughs> managing the food share. So this will be where Leanne will wait. Well, the person will wait. Um, the board here, we're going to make the most of that and use it to, to promote things and also a few feel-good uh, quotes. And then I'm just going to take you in here and then we'll show you what happens with the member of public coming in. So um, there's Debbie. Hello, Debbie. <laughs> so what's going to happen is that Debbie will, our volunteer or staff member, will come forward and let the person know to come in. Come on in. <laughs> <laughs> and they will be directed to the hand sanitizer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you just hand, uh, sanitize your hands, please. The hand sanitizer is there. Beautiful. And if so. you just wait there on the, on the sprite thing. Okay. So let me get past you. So once in the building, this is like Spielberg, um, once in the building our mem public member is there and our rebuild member is here. So then what's going to happen is that there's going to be different sections of food. So maybe this will be breads, then we'll have uh, vegetables, then we'll have dried goods and maybe miscellaneous, but we will have six of these screens. So behind each of these sections will be a volunteer or a staff member and in front will be a few items and then on the tables behind will be yeah. the bulk of the stock yeah. which will yeah. which will be brought forward um, so the then the member of the public then will be asked to come along and to come along and have a selection of our finest and then depending what we've got in stock, we'll be asking them to take either two or th choose two or three items. No, it will be here in front. The food will be here in front. And they will pick, they will choose, and then it will get popped down and they'll put it into their bag. And then that, that will continue. Beautiful. Ta -ta -da. They're very good. <laughs> and thank you for coming. Thank you. So we've also got a safety table, a volunteer safety table, um, over here. And um, we've got masks for you to wear if you would like. Um, no, you will be wearing masks, sorry. Um, we've got material masks and also these medical face masks as well and the aprons um, and if you so wish you you can wear one of these um, plastic visors as well but that's down to you and how you feel safe then there's um that's it for toilet or no toilet will be for um volunteers only so and the toilet there's one through that door and then there's a little one through that door that's our little video. We're looking forward to seeing you. <laughs> Take care. So this is CF. So that's that. Very good. Um, that probably didn't make much sense to you, Pam. I could visualise. Okay. A, a bit of it. So yeah. a few little changes that we've made since then. Are you still with us, Teresa? Yeah. 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 Um, a few little changes are that the hand sanitizer at the front of the building is actually really gritty and turns into something like PVA glue when you put it on. Oh. So we're not using that hand sanitizer. We've got pumps on a table 
with masks that are optional for people to take, pick up if they want to. So they might feel safer to do so. Um, so that's where, what the hand sanitizer. Also, the screens now cover the whole of the front. There's no gaps in it. Um, and the other thing... Can we bring our own masks? Can, yeah. Yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, and what was the other thing? Oh, toilets. We've decided just that we're going to use the disabled toilet only for us staff and volunteers. So we can keep that nice and clean and it'll have wipes in there for us to wipe down after we've been to the loo. All right? Yeah. So I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint now. And just move on. So volunteers, staff and safety, COVID-19 safety measures, standard infection control precautions. Now I have made, taken this briefing from the NHS who did a briefing for Welsh Government. So I've made this so it's easier to understand and less, less jargony, okay? So it's all pretty simple. Um, you will have heard all this stuff before, but it's just to really reiterate and to remind ourselves of what we're doing. So we know about our two meters. We hear different people saying, oh, it's just a meter. Let's stick to two meters. It's a nice safe, safe distance uh, to keep. Um, we'll be keeping two meters away from each other as for staff and volunteers, but we'll also be um, asking people that are coming from the community to keep two meters. We've used tape, there's a lot of tape around the place um, that is guiding people visually to be able to see that, that there is a two meter gap. And I also think that as um, people that are running the uh, food share, just don't be worried about saying to people, oh, make sure you keep two meters. If you're seeing people getting too close together, I certainly have appreciated that in the past. If I'm standing in a queue and people are getting a bit close, I as an individual would feel uncomfortable saying that to somebody. But I feel if you're a volunteer or staff member at an event, I think you've got a bit more kind of backup for saying and people will listen to you a bit more rather than the member of public feeling like they have to say something. So never feel worried about piping up if you see that two metre social distancing not being adhered to. Food hygiene, food hygiene, hand hygiene is massively important and is the thing really that we've noticed that is killing the infection. Um, so washing our hands is imperative as much as we can. We'll be using the kitchen sink to do that where there'll be uh, the correct um, solution to be doing that with hand towels that we'll use and then dispose of afterwards. So they're suggesting 20 seconds of washing your hands, making sure you're doing the backs of the part, the palms, around your wrists as well. I will post up a little video from the NHS, a little hand washing video uh, for your pleasure and delight to watch if you want to. Um, some people are suggesting to sing happy birthday while you're washing your hands, just because that takes you a good 20 minutes, 20 seconds to do that. So, um, respiratory etiquette, which means catch it, bin it, kill it, basically. So, um, don't come along if you have a cough, then, and it's, uh, you know, it's a consistent cough. Um, don't come along. Um, it scare yeah. everyone that way. Yeah, <laughs> um, but if you do cough or sneeze um, and you have got a mask on and it's like a big coughing, I'm not on about a little cough or a little sneeze, keep the mask on if that's the case, but if you do have a big coughing fit or a sneezing fit, just change your mask over and pop it, dispose it. If you haven't got a mask on and you're just about to put one on and you have a coughing or a sneezing fit, um, they're suggesting to cough into our elbow or if we use a tissue, to use it, catch it, bin it, kill it, to dispose of that. And we know that it's quite, it catches airborne, um, it's an airborne virus. So uh, it's just being careful with that, hence the reason people are wearing the masks. Keep well, hands away. gloves, Claire? Yeah, I'll just, I'll talk about gloves in a little bit. Oh, okay. um, keep hands away from face. We will touch our face. We, I'm terrible at touching my face, just like if I'm thinking, I can be, you know, I'm do, I've probably been doing it all through this video. Um, but just being extra vigilant. 
And also, you know, I wouldn't mind if you've seen me touching my face, just say, oh, Claire, you touched your face a little bit. Um, Because I won't necessarily know I'm doing it and it won't be a criticism. It'll just be us supporting each other as a team. Yeah. So if I see you touching your face a bit, I'll say, oh, watch out. You're touching your face a little bit. Um, It just reassures people. Um, I know I've been in a cafe uh, this morning, in fact, where there was somebody that was just their their hands were everywhere. And I was like, oh, you know, the thought occurred to me. I don't like that. So if we can create that kind of safe space for people, if you do touch your hands and your face and you're aware of it and you haven't got gloves on, go and wash your hands or use hand sanitizer. So the PPE that we will be using is a plastic apron and we have plenty of them. Um, plastic aprons will be used. So once you do it in your position to do the, the job that you're doing, um, you only need to change that plastic apron should you go away, go to the toilet, go for some fresh air, take a little break, then just change your plastic apron. Um, we have on offer the face masks and we have a visor as well. Now it's up to you which one of those you use. You don't have to wear both, you can have either or. We've got both here, it's just personal preference. Um, I haven't actually worn the visor before, um, but some people say they prefer it. Um, but just being more careful that if you do cough or sneeze when you've got the visor on, using kind of cough, that etiquette again with the tissue or your arm like that. Um, we'll also be using gloves. Um, now gloves, it's really important to know that gloves are useless if you keep the glove on and you continue doing it if you you wouldn't have one pair of gloves for the whole two hours of the session because that wouldn't make the gloves a useful ppe gloves are for one job at a time so a person comes into the food share you put the gloves on you serve them you move their container along and then you remove the gloves that's for one person and um, if you were needing to go and maybe move some bollards out the front you would put those, could put those gloves on, move the bollards, and then remove the gloves. That's one job. Yeah. If we keep the gloves on, we're just taking any any bad stuff around and dotting it around the place. The so we're going to be changing gloves quite a lot. Gloves are more changeable. Yeah. We will have tongs. Uh, people that are working on the station where it's dry goods, you you wouldn't necessarily need to wear gloves. For me, if I was working on the bakery or the cake section, I'd probably want to use gloves because you might be, the tongs might, you might come into contact with, with food items a bit more that aren't packaged. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And of course, just keep washing your hands as well. You can never wash your hands too much. Um, so PPE at the food share session do make sure that it's comfortable and put in place and will not need adjustments. So I know when I put on my face mask sometimes, I haven't quite got it around my ear properly or I'm feeling a little bit uncomfortable and then I'm fidgeting with it. Equally with the visor, you'll probably be quite self-conscious, fiddling with it a little bit. Just get used to using it so you're not kind of constantly touching and moving it. Um, and make sure that you take breaks uh, before putting it on and whilst you've got it on and keep hydrated as well. We will have a water station uh, whereby we just encourage you at any time um, making sure that your post is covered. Go and take off your PPE, have a drink, maybe get some fresh air and then come back to your post. I don't want you ever feeling like it's just too much um, because initially I think it will if, we if we're not used to wearing it. Um, don't take it off in the front when you're serving people. Don't take it off and leave it on any tables. Um, straight into a bin or go back behind the tables to remove your PPE um, and then go off and do what you need to do and then come back and then put the PPE on. That'll all be clear when you're in the building where we've sectioned those off so you feel safe. Um, and don't walk, up, walk out with your mask kind of hanging off or hanging on your chin, it defeats the whole point and really shows a bit of unprofessionalism as well. 
around what we're trying to do. Any questions around anything I've said already? Is it all no, quite clear? Um, yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. Here's, here's a quick list of things that we just want you to be aware of. You'll know all of this stuff, but it's just a reminder. So you shouldn't attend the food share session if you've developed the symptoms, um, a continuous cough, a fever, or anosmia. I can't say it. Have I said it right? I don't know. It's the loss of sense of smell, basically. Mm. So those are the three kind of uh, sort of signs that maybe you have COVID-19. And if you are unwell at the food share session, you should go home as well. Um, and please don't stress about that. If you're unwell, you're unwell. You know, you're not letting anybody down. It's, once again, your safety is really important to us and your health is really important to us. If you have a household member who's developed COVID-19, the whole household, including you, needs to self-isolate for 14 days. Make sure you wear clean clothes to the food share session. Um, some people have asked if you come into contact with somebody that's perhaps got a persistent cough or a high fever. They're saying that that's not actually a massive problem. If you're hanging out with that person, and you're not adhering to the social distancing, then it would be a problem. And with them for more than 20 minutes, then it would be a problem. But if you just come into contact with somebody, um, it generally would not mean that you have to self-isolate uh, for the 14 days, okay? Um, wear all the PPE, the apron, the face cover, the gloves as required that have been provided for you. And where possible, bring your own items with you, such as a cup or a glass if you want to have some water. We will have some plastic or paper items here as well that you can use. Um, and if you've got your personal belongings, a bag, a coat, um, you'll be able to leave those in the staff room or the uh, tea and coffee room at CF61 and that'll be secure and locked throughout the session. Um, so um, yeah, with mobile phones as well, we ask that when you're wearing PPE, um, not to have your mobile phone device with you. So we just leave that in the office. Um, and uh, yeah, we can tell you the code for our office. So should you need anything, you can come and get it um, separately. Is that okay? Yeah, it's fine. So needing to use the toilet or taking a break. So the toilet will be the disabled toilet. Um, in there will be wipes and just wipe down after you. Um, it will be cleaned on arrival. And then if we can just wipe as we go, just wipe in the sink, the taps, the door handle, disposing of the wipe and then leaving the bathroom. That would be great. How are we going to make sure that the community feels safe? We're going to make sure that the two metres social distancing is adhered to. We've asked the community to bring their own plastic bags or carrier bags. Um, we've been, thank you for the, we've got loads of bags here actually as well, which have been here since last week. So they've had 72 hours um, in a safe environment. So if there were any baddies, any bugs on them, they would have gone by now. And um, so we've got safe plastic bags that people can use um, once they're in here. Um, and I think as well, just giving people clear instructions, keeping things simple, um, not confusing anything, and just making the atmosphere feel light and enjoyable experience for people, not making people feel like they've got a rush. Um, even if we find we've got a big queue of people, we just give people attention and time. Um, making sure they feel listened to, you know, how are you? How have you been finding things? You know, those conversations can happen as they're walking down the line, gathering their food. It's not just like boom, 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 get your food and go. It's a time where we can really interact with the local community. Um, and should there be any need, we will be taking details of them as well. So if somebody says, you know, actually I'm, I'm really struggling around my mental health or financially we're really struggling, we've got their details and we'll be able to um, send them information just to maybe help them out or encouraging them on, on their journey. We don't know where people are going to be when they arrive. Um, so it's a personal and collective responsibility, all of this. Um, we know all the information. 
Um, we as Rebuild have done the most we can. There's probably more we could always do, but we believe that we've done the most we can to make things feel safe. And we're all in this together. There'll be things that we miss, um, that you won't miss. There'll be things that you miss, that we won't miss. So it's about speaking up and saying, oh, did you notice this? Or oh, your mask isn't quite on correctly. Or oh, have you noticed that, you know, just really good communication between us all can make us all feel really safe and looked after as a team. And asking questions, you know, there's never a daft question to ask. I am the queen of daft questions. <laughs> I ask them all the time, but I get the answers I need. Um, sometimes the answer is I didn't listen properly <laughs> in the first place, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, it's really important that we feel like we're able to kind of just be in this together and um, we're all free to express ourselves. And if we see something that's amiss, then we can, if we don't know about it, we can't change it, can we? So, um, and we're always looking for ways that we can improve the things that we do. So we're coming to the end now. What's it gonna look like on a Thursday? So we're gonna have a maximum of four people per session and everybody will go on a rotor. Um, Nathan is going to be, unless he wants some, went a Thursday off, he's going to be quite a consistent at the, um, the sessions. And, um, and then we'll have, there'll be myself, Debbie and Leanne, um, obviously Teresa and Pam. Um, this week, uh, we've got Nathan, we've got Pam, we've got myself and we've got Debbie. So we are the four amigos this Thursday. Mm -hmm. And then next week, then Teresa will be stepping in then and we'll be, we'll, we'll get the road to sorted for next week with Leanne and Debbie and then one other uh, volunteer with Nathan. So, so far, and then we'll just keep adding people and moving people around. It might be that we benefit from having more people. Um, it depends on how many people come along and use the service. We're looking for people to arrive at about 11.45. The first 15 minutes will just be a briefing, just to let you know, um, we've invested in some trays that the food is wow. going to be going in for people and it will be passed down the line. So we'll be just introducing you to those things. Um, and each week there might be something we might have added or taken away just to keep you up to date. And then we'll spend an hour then just putting all the food out, listening to a bit of music and just socializing and catching up with each other um, and trying to set up and create a nice environment ready for people to arrive. The doors will open at one o'clock and we'll close at three o'clock or until the food goes. As we know, this is all a little bit of a lottery because we never know how much food is coming and we never know who's gonna actually want food. So we're hoping that it all works out and um, we get rid of all the food we have and we're able to provide food for everybody that comes to the door. Um, we'll manage that um, with communication with people that arrive, with how much food we've got, um, so we're just clearly communicating. If there's a massive queue, we're going to say to people, look, we've only got X, Y, and Z food. We're going to try and give you all a piece of food. Um, but we'll be communicating that while they're standing in the queue. Hopefully it's not raining. Yeah. But if it's raining, people will bring brollies. Um, and, uh, yeah, we will, we'll see. Um, we have got another idea, should it rain? Um, but that's worst case scenario using the corridor gotcha. around. Oh, right. yeah. yeah um so when the food share ends um let me just say before i say that bit um if you need a break at any time just make sure you've got your slot covered and then go and take a little break okay um when the food share ends then the volunteers and staff will take a 15 minute break just to sort of breathe and debrief and then we'll do the cleaning and the tidying up after that. So who's involved? Who's, uh, what food have we got coming in? So we've linked up with Fair Share Cymru. Actually, it's Fair Share Go is that first section. Fair Share Go do Waitress and Tesco Culver House Cross. And we've got their big pickups. So that's on a Wednesday evening for both of those pickups. Um, we've got Fair Share Cymru then. So I've done it the wrong way around will pick up the Barry pickup. Now we've paid to be part of this service and we get, I think it's 50 kilos of food 
I think that's right. It's a lot of food. That's a lot. I don't know how much that actually is in reality, but we'll find out tomorrow. <laughs> yes. So that's going to be dried goods, uh, fruits and vegetables. So that will come on a Wednesday, uh, ready for the Thursday. And then we've got the St. Athen Co-op pickup on a Thursday morning. And we're partnering with an organisation called Need to Feed, who is a voluntary group that started at the beginning of lockdown in St. Athen. And they've been collecting all across Cardiff in the Vale and are distributing throughout the week. So we're working with them um, and they are providing some extra food for us on a Thursday oh, morning. Oh, so yeah. it's really good. We've got a lot of food. My, my, I'm sweating on the fact that we might not have the people that turn up. But we've done, we've, we've done our best to sort of promote it as widely as possible. And we just need to see what happens on the day. That's the end of me babbling. Um, I will send you this PowerPoint through the YouTube link um, with the videos. So you, if you need any refreshing, uh, you can dip into that. Or you can just look at the PowerPoint for the notes rather than listening in again. Um, any questions or thoughts? Any things that you think I might have missed out? Um, anything? Have you given um, a flyer or a poster to um, the people that give out food bank food? They have. They yeah. They aren't doing it in Flantwit Major. Oh, okay. um, but We have connected it. We have connected in with. Uh, the food bank in the Vale of Glamorgan who know about it and have been promoting it for us. Oh, excellent. So, okay. Yeah, they stopped doing it like locally. They just had a central area and they were doing the food parcels to people. Oh, yes. So that were being taken to people's homes. Um, so they did it that way. Um, but yeah, good idea though. Anything else? Is the council aware? what you're trying to achieve as well so they yeah. put it on their website yeah we've done that with they've got a facebook page available oh, okay. facebook page um we've also printed off thousands of leaflets as well which should we we didn't know what, whether to flyer so it, depending on how many people come we might do door-to-door -door flyer in next week after this one okay i might help with that depending on the day you do it okay Okay, that's okay. cool. Yeah, lovely. Fantastic. Okay, if there's no questions, I did say it was short and sweet, 36 minutes. Um, I'm going to stop.